Hello and welcome to the Logistics Business Virtual Show. My name is Paul Hamblin and you've joined the latest in our series of expert panels which, with which we look at uh, different sectors of logistics and distribution and software uh, to hopefully give you a rounded picture of the state of the sector and to help you in your decision making. Uh, today's discussion is on the theme of inventory management and associated warehouse technologies, which of course no modern warehouse can really afford to be without. And we've got some exciting new technologies, which uh, our panelists are going to tell you about today as well. Important to say, it, it's not about giving you death by PowerPoint. This is not a deep sales pitch. It's about getting a discussion going and for our team to give you their expertise. So do feel free to put your questions to the panelists via the section on your, on your Zoom. Um, and yeah, I suppose that's it. Uh, let's ask everyone to introduce themselves, shall we? And we'll take it from there. So let's start with you, Craig. Let's tell everyone just very briefly uh, who you are and what you do. Thank you, Paul. Hello, everybody. I'm Craig Summers. I'm the UK Managing Director of Manhattan Associates. Thank you, and Mike? Yeah, I'm Mike Becker, co-founder and managing director of Docs Innovation in Germany. Okay, and Cedric? Hello, I'm Cedric Molon. Uh, I am a co-founder and president of uh, Visiotix. Okay, fantastic. And finally, Jonathan. So hi, everybody. I'm Jonathan Panozzo. I'm a sales manager of software for Viasto Software based in Germany. Okay, fantastic. Well, look, just to start us off, I'm, I'm going to ask each of you to talk a bit about the solutions and the products that you have in this space and how you make, how you benefit uh, your customers. So let's do that first before we have a wider discussion on the area of, uh, uh, of warehouse and inventory management. Um, so just, yeah, be prepared to talk for a few minutes each on this and let, let's start with you again, Craig. Okay, thank you, Paul. Yeah, so Manhattan Associates um, has a, a very rich 32 year history of supplying Historically retailers, but far broader than that, but but with supply chain solutions, primarily, and we've stuck in that time with our with, with our core expertise. So at a high level, we, we focus on three things. We focus on warehouse management systems, transport management systems, and order management systems. And our, and our whole motivation and desire is to help our customers, um, as I say, predominantly retail, but, but across wholesale and other areas where supply chain is an issue, um, but to help our customers work more efficiently. And the other thing in recent times we've done is completely migrated our solutions to the cloud to ensure that we now supply versionless solutions because with the kind of disruption that we've seen in the past few years, you cannot wait for technology to, to, to catch up. You have to have technology that's always up to date. Okay, fantastic. Can I come to you next, Jonathan, and tell us a bit about Viastore? Sure. So Viastore Software, so first of all, thanks for having me. And um, no Viastore Software is part of Viastore Group, which is a, um, together with its sister company, Viastore Systems, is a complete um, intralogistics provider for its customers. So basically, we not only supply customers with our warehouse, management um, software, but also with complete automated um, systems. Um, we are a German-based company, but we operate globally. And something we pride ourselves on is to um, yeah, give our, our customers the complete intra-logistics inter solution. So not just software, but also hardware. And um, one of our um, most proud things that we su um, support our customers with is the integration of um, warehouse management software together with manufacturing software. So basically we connect those two uh, systems in order to um, generate um, smart factory. And do you do anything in the transport sector? Yes, so um, not directly. We don't supply customers with hardware, but um, we connect our software with the transport um, hardware in okay fine customers. okay good because we're going to talk about two issues really here we'll talk about in in warehouse solutions but we'll also talk about transport and the all-important delivery software as well sure. but before we do that let's let's come to mike from uh, docs innovation mike tell us about your business yeah also thank you for having me um we're not we are a little bit younger than all the both uh, companies before us so we're founded 2017 what we do is we are offering 
very solution or autonomous solution in the, uh, for intra logistics. So our main uh, goal is to do autonomous inventory management in different scenarios. We have, for example, inventory, which is a drone and an AMR connected with the wire to provide at least five hours of battery power for the drone. And we do autonomous stock taking in warehouses for pellet racks. Or uh, we do digital twins of the warehouse with different um, technologies. So for example, we do scanning of pallets for in and outbound. We offer um, inventory management for outside with drones and also for inside with uh, autonomous camera modules. So what we offer is everything around autonomous stock taking solutions in warehouses and logistics. And Cedric, tell us a bit about Visiotix. Uh, yes, Paul. So uh, to, to go into this, uh, into this dialogue, so we are even younger than uh, Max Doc's company. <laughs> but with, my, with Mike, so we are a computer vision startup that specialized in warehousing and logistics applications. Uh, we offer uh, a software, a professional barcode scanning software. It is our, our first uh, offering that uh, we embed with our partners into indeed uh, robots, cobots, drones, uh, AGVs or AMR autonomous uh, mobile robots. And our goal is to make sure that these uh, systems can read and extract all the data, all the barcode data from the pallets, from the goods, that uh, these systems see in a warehouse or in a, a logistic environment. And we do this independently from the hardware, meaning that uh, you can use whatever camera you have in your system, we will adapt to it. Okay, so let, let, let's just talk about your, because it's a relatively new technology. Let's talk a bit about Mike and, and Cedric, because you do work together on this. Mike, you've talked about automatic inventory uh, management via drone. Now, this is obviously quite an exciting concept. Just, just explain how it actually works, how, we, how a user in the warehouse would, so would, would use this drone what and the how system it would is make doing. a difference to clients. So what our system provides is, as I uh, said before, and it is an AMR and a drone connected with the wire. And um, what the customer is doing is he's telling the system to do stock taking or inventory in I one to five, for example, tomorrow in the morning at five. So what the system does, it docks out of a docking station, same like a Hoover, a robot Hoover or whatever, and then it drives to the desired destination and then it starts its um, stock taking mission, which means the drone takes off and the drone flies autonomously down the aisle and it captures all information that the drone can capture. For example, it captures barcodes, it captures images and distances and positions. And everything is then combined in our AMR to generate the information of what stock or what barcode has been read in uh, at what position. And for this, we, for example, use uh, the Viziotix barcode scanning SDK, um, yeah, which is for us currently the best one that's on the market because they are the fastest and the most accurate, which we could find. And yeah, we're working with them now, I guess, nearly a year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Cedric. No, you're um, right, yeah. And we were very happy with working with them because um, they're very supportive and helping us a lot. Okay, so Cedric, you talked about the, the, this data capture. How has, how has data capture advanced? What does it now give users that it didn't have, say, two or three years ago? Yeah, uh, so first, Mike, thanks a lot for this introduction. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. And, and, and Paul, to to jump onto the, the, the topic, there is a big trend in uh, automatic identification in warehouse that, for example, uh, Max robots or AGVs or AMR uh, are using uh, higher and higher resolution cameras uh, because uh, it's like mobile phones, right? Our cameras are getting more and more pixels. We now have a mobile, a mobile phone with uh, 20 megapixels, whatever, 30 megapixel uh, resolution cameras. And basically, it's the same trend in uh, the industrial uh, uh, segment. And uh, what brought us to, uh, to help and support uh, Mike uh, and obviously other partners in logistics is to be able to read all barcodes in these very high resolution cameras 
and being able to extract, for example, uh, 20, 30, 40 barcodes in one image. And this is very important for companies like Docs, like Mac, to do this very accurately, but also to do this very quickly because the drone and the robots uh, are moving in the, um, in the warehouse. So you need to make sure that despite the blur, despite the overexposure, despite that barcodes can be scratched or can be at a longer distance than some others, that you can still read all of them. So there is a, a big challenge in that. And uh, we are happy to take the challenge uh, for warehouse management. Okay, fantastic. Well, talking about warehouse management, let me, let me bring in Craig and Jonathan, starting with you, Craig. Give us, give us a summary of the, of the advantages of a, of a, of a, of a state-of-the-art warehouse management system and what it is now able to help customers with and do for them that they might not be aware of, perhaps. Yeah, and I think, and it's really interesting hearing um, hearing Cedric and Mike. So thank you. Perhaps we should talk afterwards as well. Um, it's it's so the the warehouse operation is, in its most simplistic terms, taking things in, putting them away, and sending them back out. Um, and you know, but behind, but underneath that, and anybody that's been in a large warehouse knows the 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 the, the size and the complexity of the scale of that in in a lot of operations means you need really accurate control. So the first thing is you want to have complete confidence of what you've got when, it's, when, when more is coming in or when you're likely to need more and where it's all going. And if, if we think, and I'm, I'm now talking a number of years of, of, of disruption, but, but it, it worked pretty well when you knew you had, um, had defined quantities going to stores and then suddenly we all wanted an individual of something coming to us the next day. You know, in an operation that was built for, for for a volume going to replenish a store in a more traditional high street retail environment. So you really need to be able to combine those in one place. You also need absolutely in today's world that confidence that that as pressures change. So in lockdown, suddenly high street retailers went from, I don't know, say 10 to 30 percent of e-com to well in excess of 40 percent of e-com. And you need an operation that, you know, can cope with that kind of change really quickly in a way that might never have been thought of before. In, in, in addition to that, um, you really want the confidence in knowing what's there because the less confidence you've got, the more stock you're going to hold, you know, and the more stock you're holding, the more money you're wasting. So, so you really want that, that level of confidence through your whole supply chain because what's coming in and going out is going somewhere as well. So you want to know there's a level of integration to the next stages of the process. Because, you know, as, as consumers, if I now put ourselves, because we're all the great thing about working in supply chain, working around retail and wholesale, is we're all consumers as well. We just want, we just want to know what we've asked for, we're going to get, whether it's going into a store or ordering something online. We just want the confidence. We know we can either pick it up or it's going to arrive um, when you want it to. And you want to know that your systems are able to do that. I think just going one stage further and really, really going on from um, what, what Mike and Cedric have been talking about, a modern warehouse really needs to understand how people and machines work together. Um, and even the most highly automated of warehouses still need people. So you need a warehouse management system that truly knows how to understand how to talk with you know, talk with MHE, mechanical handling equipment, talk with robotics, talk with the modern things. Because in, in, here's a really, really simplistic example. One of, the most, one of the most simplistic forms of automation is a conveyor, right? But there's no good having a conveyor with lots of stuff coming to the end and nobody ready to, to do the next stage for it. If you don't have the people ready to take what's coming off it because you're... Mm -hmm warehouse management system hasn't talked very well with the conveyor system then you've got a problem or you've got a load of people waiting for something to come off that isn't coming so in, in the modern world you need really good understanding and integration between how your automation works with your people and what about all separate automation parts speaking to each other you know the so-called single source of truth can that be done now where a management software can also talk to automation of, say, forklift trucks or something of that kind? Well, we, we, we've taken, when we rewrote our, our WMS to be um, microservice-based and cloud-native, we took quite a bold step. We, we, we took the understanding that it's 
unlikely, not impossible, but unlikely one, one um, DC or warehouse operation would have a single supplier for all of their robotics and MHE, you know, that, that, mm -hmm. and, and each of those will have their own control systems, you know, <laughs> known as WCSs, but, but, but each of them will likely to have their own control systems but it's unlikely you would have multiple WMSs. So you would need a WMS to talk to all of these multiple control systems. So we embedded into our WMS a warehouse execution system, which is really a layer that will talk between the multiple um, WCSs and, and the single point back into the WMS to try and take care of, of what I've been talking about in terms of what you asked, Paul, in that communication, but also enable, you know, um, person and machine to work in harmony. Because as part of that, you can really start learning and using, you know, <laughs> everyone talks about artificial intelligence and machine learning, but actually you do want to learn how an operation is working, how you can keep improving it using clever, clever mathematics and algorithms to do that. And, and, and that's exactly the... The approach we've taken to ensure that kind of streamlined operation between people and machines are, are, are working. Have you got any evidence or any you know facts or figures that can back up what sort of difference AI and machine learning is making for your products? Or is it too early to say? <laughs> and actually it might be one I have to supply you afterwards because I'd never remember yeah. it accurately off the top of my head. But but the short answer is is, is yes. Um, because, you know, it's back to that example, if it's not working, it's really difficult to get the benefits of one thing in isolation, you know, you need the overall benefits to an operation to really see what's happening. Sure, okay, understood. And just just on before we before we move away from from Manhattan specifics, you've talked about, you made the decision to migrate to the cloud, what's the benefit to your users of you doing that? Yeah, and, and you know, without, without, um, without getting on a soapbox, you know, there's this kind of reality that all clouds aren't equal, you know, as, 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 a, as a historic provider, you know, <laughs> in 32 years, we weren't using cloud native um, 32 years ago because it didn't exist. But we took an architectural decision that when we migrated to the cloud, we wouldn't just put a classic on-prem application straight into the cloud, which um, and virtualize it and call it cloud, we would rewrite it and componentize it and turn and use what 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 is known as microservices, and by doing that, it enables and the benefits here, Paul, is first of all, it's it's very elastic for scalability. If you've still got a monolithic application, you've still got to size it for the the hour a year you're you're, you're at your busiest, you know, and and you know that might be peak, it might be Black Friday, it might be Cyber Monday, it might be Christmas, who knows what it is, but historically, people size their whole operation on on possibly an hour a year <laughs> in reality whereas you know with a componentized approach you can just start spinning up the components that need more power at that time you know Im imagine a car engine where you could just fire up another couple of cylinders in fact <laughs> here, here we go my wife has a golf um it tells you when it's running on two cylinders and four cylinders so it's conserving energy when it doesn't need it and it fires it up when it needs it you know so so, so, so that principle was scale. But the other thing with it, because it's componentized, we can truly say it is versionless because you don't have to upgrade the whole lot. You upgrade components at a time. And as you bring in more functionality, you just need to upgrade the relevant components for that functionality, um, which means we can constantly be responding, reacting rather than the old world of an annual release you know, we're able to release quarterly now. We could do it more often, but we don't want to, you know, there, there's consumption of, of change and we do a lot of regression testing so we don't force things on people. But, but being able to know new things are coming through or you can finesse and refine on a regular basis to make sure things are up to date. And, and, and if I frame it differently, uh, the IT industry for years and years told everyone they needed to be agile because it sounded good. But really really there wasn't many needs to be agile and then suddenly in the last couple of years <laughs> you know everything changed and the need for agility really started coming in you know who'd have known some of the things that we've been through and some of the things that we've actually achieved in supply chain so so it it, it, it the, the timing has been has been perfect without us perhaps realizing why but the benefit to our customers is really high 
And we can say with confidence now, Paul, that it's the last WMS they're going to put in because they're not going to have to go through this cycle of every five plus years of having to do quite a major disruptive upgrade. Sure. OK, thank you for that. So moving over to Jonathan then at Viastore. Jonathan, what customers, what, are, what questions are your customers asking you and how are you answering them? Take us through all the benefits and, and provisions of your, of your systems. Well, most of the customers always ask the difference between ERP system, warehouse management system, and manufacturing system. And the benefit of our system is basically, as Craig already said, it's not only enough to know which goods you have on stock. Nowadays, you have to know why do you have them in stock? Where are they specifically? Which waste through the warehouse are they taken? Why are they transported in that direction? And what are they needed for? So I like to um, see it as a kind of soccer pitch. Yeah? So you have, for example, four defenders, four midfielders, two strikers. But where are they going? What's, what are their tasks? And that's what our, management, um, our warehouse management system provides. It's 100% transparency throughout the warehouse. Yeah? And when you combine it with different warehouses, for example, you have one company that has two separate warehouses, you can combine them and have transparency over their warehouse too. So the benefit of a warehouse management system is to have complete transparency of where your goods are located and where your goods are located. I mean, if you define inventory, it's not just goods located in a specific way, but it's also, um, the, the storage of defined goods under certain, under, under certain circumstances in a specific location. And that's what the warehouse management system provides. And let's face it, um, storing goods can also, uh, goods can also be a liability. If you have too much of them, you run a risk of, of damaging them, theft or maybe spoilage. Having too less of them, uh, you might not be able to provide your customer with, with uh, their product. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a small gap that you can take. Uh, it's a small risk that you can really um, take and the um, warehouse management system provides the solution for that. Okay, so let's, let's move on to sort of broader questions. As a customer, what do you advise me to do uh, if I'm embarking on a journey where I'm perhaps upgrading or even getting a system of this kind for the first time? Um, let me ask all of you. I mean, we're talking about slightly different things with Mike's talking about inventory management as opposed to a whole WMS, but let's apply it to our sectors that we're, we're familiar with. Um, and maybe, maybe we'll stick with you, Jonathan, to, to, to start. What, what, what advice would you give to a new customer? Well, don't wait too long because the longer you take, the harder it will be to, to start the change within your company. But at the same time, analyze, start analyzing which system is really needed for your company and will benefit your company, whether it's an WMS or a MES, but start analyzing and, and really check what is best for your company. And how, and how do I do that analysis? What sort of questions would I be asking so that, so that I would know what I should be analyzing? Well, you have to um, think of what do you want to achieve with the system? What is it that you currently think you're lacking and what should the outcome be of implementing a new system. Then you start from there. Start with why. Why should I implement something? And then um, ask yourself the question, which of those systems will help me to get to that specific target? Right, okay, thank you for that. Coming to you, coming to you then, Mike, what question should I be asking myself as a potential customer of your system? I think uh, exactly what Jonathan said is, uh, I think, the correct answer just to analyze first what you're really lacking, because also what we provide is we provide transparency, exactly the same what the guys from the WMS provides, but uh, they provide the transparency on the stock view, what they might have put it into and we provide the real transparency let's say this way because we prove that their wms is somehow correct with the reality that that, that we see in our system and um for us transparency is helping most of the customers to um achieve a better or to achieve um more value in their supply chain but 
transparency is not always easy to understand. And I think for most of our customer, the first part is to understand what transparency means for their business. If they have transparency, what does it offer them in the next steps to get a better uh, to get better processes after that? I think this is the most important thing that uh, we always tell our customer, think about what helps, what helps you when you have transparency in your supply chain. Well, and what's, when you say, what does full transparency mean? What can it mean then? Tell us, well, tell us the, what, what it could mean. It could mean that, for, for example, the, the, the same principle, what Jonathan said, that overstock, understock, that you have the better control of your stock because you really know what is there and you really know how much there is. And then you can control your stock to get um, to uh, out level your warehouse um, stock inside for all goods you have. And also transparency for many of our customer means they can prove their customers what is stored where so they also know what is stored where and what the condition is. And the condition is also a very important thing due to we're taking images, we're analyzing the images. You, we can prove or the customer can prove their customers that everything that is stored inside their warehouse is somehow in a good condition. Sure. And I mean, it must be hard to quantify and you're a new business, but have you got a sense of what the ROI, the return on investment is with your, with your drone system? Um, exactly. This is one of the biggest tasks to do because transparency is somehow something that you can, cannot tell in a monetary value. So what we tell them is that first of all, all the processes before and behind the transparency can be looked up and calculate an ROI for. And most of our customers said that if they calculate an ROI, they meet something about seven to eight months is their ROI for, for our system. And uh, this is something that most of our customers really um, uh, agreed on. And um, you have also the other side to tell them, instead of having the transparency or with having the transparency, if you, for example, find in electronics business, one package that you might have to deliver on Monday and you can't find on the Friday evening and uh, the system is doing its work over the weekend and you find it, then you, have to, then you have to prove that you have generated value because you find the missing pallet in the end. Sure, okay, coming back to you then, Craig, you know, what reassurance can you give customers? They're, they're worried about investment, they're worried about cost, they're worried about implementation, implementation disruption. What, what do you tell what those customers? Yeah, and and Paul, it's really good, and I think and and I think Jonathan said it as well about don't delay. It's it, <laughs> we 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 could all find reasons not to do things, and there's and there feels like there's strong business reasons not to do things. Um, if if let me put it a different way. Let, if 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 you if the competition you're worried about, if you're a more traditional kind of supplier or retailer, if the competition you're worried about is um, is the um, is ecom only, right? Is is pure play? Then they are investing an enormous amount of their money in technology. That's what they do. That's their whole business differentiator. That's everything they're doing. And if your desire is to compete with them. And yet you're not investing at a level in your technology to be to be to, to aspire to be as good as them, then you are just going backwards in potential competitive um, advantage. Um, and it's a really easy thing for me to say, but it can be a hard, a hard decision for people to make. I know if I look at order management systems, for instance, you know, we, we have the Manhattan Active Omni Suite. Where and, and thinking of the inventory management um, theme, our desire is to enable a customer to, if they've got a product or or something in their supply chain somewhere, and a customer wants it, they should be able to get it. So you should know what you have, where it is, um, and how to get it to somebody, and actually add a bit of business logic to it to say, is it cost effective to do that? You know, if I have a load of products sitting in Aberdeen. And it's selling in Southampton. Would it be smart to move it all down, or would it be smart to to to, to take orders online and ship it direct? You know, the, 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 there's questions and an answer you want to make. But actually, if I'm if I'm thinking about these decisions, the longer I delay, the longer I'm going to put off what probably is inevitable in what I need. 
I'd also say, you know, we, we've always as a company, even though we're a software company, we've always kept a big consulting division and we deliver our own solutions because we know these decisions are big. We know people find they're, 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 they're concerning because of the disruption that can come along. So we do give the reassurance that, that, that we're doing it ourselves. This is all we do. Um, and we really have to care about their success. We can't just sell some software and move on because we're there all the way through, you know, through the implementation, through the go live, through the business as usual running. Because we do know, you know, 32, I keep saying it, but 32 years of, of mission critical systems or business critical systems, you know, you want to do everything you can to minimize that, that disruption. But also in parallel, really understand, perhaps going back to your, your, your first bit of the question, really understand what the customer wants to achieve and the benefits they want to see and work on those benefits up front as well. And really be able to afterwards to say, what can you do today that you couldn't do yesterday? How, how is this helping you as an organization sell more of what you sell? at a lower operational expenditure, because they're the two things that drive any business case. By the time you get to a, a CEO and CFO, the two things they care most about is selling more and spending less. So, so being able to align to those through a strategic investment is, is a really important thing. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, look, we've been talking, guys, about really, uh, we've, been, we've really been confined within the four walls of the warehouse in our discussion so far. But of course, the key part of any product's journey is the journey to the final customer. I mean, let me start with you here, Cedric. What is the value of your product in making sure that the customer experience is also improved? Because we know, don't we? We know that for retailers, the customer experience is everything at the moment in terms of e-commerce and, and home delivery. So Cedric, taking that point from warehouse traceability and accuracy, how does that work for the customer? The end user, right? Um, so you're, we're talking about the end user, right? Yeah. Well, I, sorry, the 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 consumer, I should say, the person who's receiving the goods. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so our our solution. So it's very interesting because I think we are all in the the same game at different level. So we want to make sure that the goods are going to the the end user at the right time uh, at less cost possible. And uh, basically, the advantage of, uh, I would say, at our end for uh, the Videotik software is, is that it is adapted to any uh, hardware. So let's say you are an end user uh, and uh, let's say you want information on a product. Uh, your camera uh, will be a standard camera for mobile devices, right? And this camera uh, will be for the real world. It has to read barcodes that are scratched that are overexposed, uh, that are 1D, uh, EAN UPC codes for retail, or it could be code 39 for, for us in warehouse. It could be also uh, a QR code. But the, the customer wants information very fast, right? They want information from the product very fast with their mobile phone. And it's very important for us that they can read all barcodes uh, very accurately, but very fast. So that's what we bring. We, we provide a brick of technology, right? So we, we are enabling uh, to increase the customer, the end customer satisfaction as much as possible by getting the information from the product fast through a barcode information. I see. Okay, thank you. And then coming back to you, to you, Mike, and so I'm thinking of your of the, of the traceability of the of, of the. Um, I've got this vision of of the drone flying around the warehouse on this. Uh, you know, five meter cable and it's very exciting, but supposing somebody has stacked the pallet the wrong way and the barcodes can't be read. What, what, how, how do we address that? Currently, we are not able to look through. So we cannot look through a pallet, we cannot pick the pallet or whatever. Um, so we are, we are also facing the same issue when something, when we can't see the, 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 the label itself. For sure, there are computer vision techniques to somehow determine what kind of palette it might be with the label or the information on the palette. But in the end, we also can't find them. We only show the customer now user interface or in the export that there is something and you, uh, but we cannot read what it is. And um, the benefit on from our system is due to taking images 
the customer does not need to go to the specific position with their forklift driver and check it again, because most of the people are just checking the WMS and saying, okay, on the WMS, there's a pallet of chocolate. I see that this pallet that I saw without a barcode is this chocolate from the whatever company I stored. And then they might say, okay, this might fit because somehow somebody just put it uh, on the wrong side. And then they say that they are fine with this. And um, for example, if the, the uh, barcode is somehow um, uh, destroyed, that there's no way to read it anymore, then we can still double check it with OCR or the customer can check, okay, this is the SSCC or the barcode content, which is print on the label. And then he can still confirm that this is the given palette or not. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we did, Craig, Craig in particular did touch on this, but I know it is an issue for all for potential customers. And so I'd like all of you to answer in terms of how disruptive is the implementation of your products when you go into a new client. So can each of you, if I ask each of you in turn to tell me what I could expect in terms of implementation time and what level of disruption I could expect to my existing processes. So let's, let's start with you, Mike. So for us, our main USP is that uh, our implementation time is the lowest because we don't need to bring external hardware. We do not need to change uh, infrastructure in the warehouse. So this is our main USP from our system. Means that for a warehouse, let's say 50,000 pallet spaces, roughly we need three days with everything set up, tested and configured. And from the disruptive side, it depends on your current processes. So we have customer who have to do, for example, every week their inventory. So they have to roll their whole invent the whole warehouse once mm -hmm. in a week or once in a month. Then for sure, the you see the disruption directly because then with the person who's normally doing it, you don't need to do it, uh, you don't need to do it anymore. He can do more valuable tasks. Because as we know, currently the logistics business, there is a lack of good stuff in this whole business. So means when I have my good stuff doing the inventory, it's not valuable for the company because you don't earn money with to counting any. So um, what we offer is that the customer or the stuff of the customer can do more valuable work. And this is um, the main thing from our side. And if you do it, and if you do not have to do it monthly or whatever, you will see that your stock and also the accuracy of your, um, of your warehouse will increase due to every time flying and doing the inventory, it will double check against the WMS and it can also correct everything that is stored wrong. So you will see in the end that uh, you have less of searching in your warehouse because you can find it earlier. And that's all for three days, only three days disruption, really. Yeah. Okay. Cedric, what about what about your own products? Disruption and implementation time. Yeah, I think Mike would be a good witness to tell you why he chose, uh, chose Visiodix, but let's put it this way. Um, what is disruptive is that we are very fast. Uh, for example, to equip uh, Mike with uh, our, our uh, Visiodix barcode software, we're able to read barcodes 10 times faster than existing systems. Uh, give you an example with uh, MaxiScan algorithm we use, we're able to read all barcodes in a 20 megapixel size image. That is extremely fast. That's the first thing. The second thing is we're able to read all barcodes in an image, uh, we call it MaxiScan. So it's a disruptive because we're able to read 50, 80 barcodes in one image uh, very fast. But what is also very interesting when we're talking about supply chain issues is that nowadays uh, our customers have a lot of issues to get the supply of their own hardware. So the subcomponents to be able to, to build and manufacture their own robots, AGVs or drone. And uh, like us, uh, like all of us, they're trying to find new sources of supply. So they don't want to use proprietary uh, camera to read barcodes. They want to use industrial standard cameras because uh, first of all, they can replace them if there is a supply chain issue with them. So they can have second source or, second source or third source. And also because it is uh, more interesting uh, in terms of cost, it is uh, cheaper than a proprietary system. So with Visiotix, uh, what is disruptive as well is we can put the Visiotix brick, technology brick into your system and you don't need to change your hardware and you can keep your flexibility of supply chain for your cameras. 
Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Jonathan, implementation times, disruption, what, what, do, what, do, what do you say to beer store customers? Well, as we all know, um, time is key and time is money. So we try to limit uh, disruption time as low as possible. So what we do normally is to um, set up a new server at customer side on which we will install our, our software and customize our software on that new server and um, work closely with project management of the customer side, which means IT uh, management of the customer and operation people from the customer and do all the testing on the new server and limit that to uh, weekends so that when we are when we feel that we are ready, we go live uh, on the new server and we are ready. And then fortunately we have some customers that have uh, seasonal products so that um, they have downtimes naturally in which we use them for installing our system. But everybody wants to um, keep downtime time as the lowest possible. So we do that as well. Okay, thank you. And Craig? Yeah, so if I start with any customers that are on any of the Manhattan Active products, so Manhattan Active Warehouse Management, Order Management, or Transport Management, then it's zero downtime upgrades. Now, you know, it is because of the architecture, we don't have to take anything down, and that's, and, and that's our commitment. If it's a new customer... Um, very it isn't ever really a green field is it you know it's you, 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 we are part of a, a a major program whether it be a new build dc a refit of a dc new mhe coming in you know there tends to be a sequential number of decisions that are then executed in 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 parallel so disrupt let's start with disruption it, it if you think of it as disruption, that's a dangerous thing because it's an opportunity to, to, to think of your business, how you want it today, not how it was yesterday. And, mm -hmm. and if your warehouse operation still has bits of paper running around it, still has people, you know, either with bits of paper or an old fashioned green screen RF guns who happen to use smartphones in their personal life, you know, then, then the opportunity is really great. And when we start bringing this stuff to them, you know, they, they get excited about the future and, part, and, and those that are affected most by it get, get to feel part of it as well. So, so from a timing point of view, you, you, for, 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 for a major warehouse, you know, assuming it's been built and fitted um, and, and ready to go, you are talking four to six months onwards, really depending on the time the customer wants to do it in. I, I would say we, we can normally be quicker than most of our customers have an appetite for or, or, or are ready for. We, we, we know how it is. Yeah. And there's a lot of things as well that, that, that we've learned over time. You know, if we sit... 32 um, years, Craig. Sorry, yeah, I did mention that. I did mention that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, 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 you know, if we sit behind a major ERP implementation, for instance, then then you keep pushing some of your benefits downstream. You know, there's some smart reasons to, to do those separately or to integrate with the legacy systems and switch over to the ERP system when that's up and running. Because, you know, if, you, if you're waiting for one set of benefits based on, on one big system go live, then, you know, you need one slippage in ERP and that pushes everything else down the line, for instance. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. To be honest, we're at the end of time. So, I, you know, all... All, all four of you are in state-of-the-art technology companies. And so I, ca I can't let you go. I've got, I've got to ask, you know, what's the next level of capability we can expect in each of your speciality areas? We've heard about this amazing stuff that you've all got. What's it going to have in five years that it hasn't got now? So let, let's start with you, Jonathan. Well, one big thing that we are facing and that is in high demand is, is uh, starting with analytics, inventory analytics maybe spinning that a bit further into um, increasing AI predictive picking. So basically knowing what is going to happen even though nothing has been purchased yet. So that's something that the future will, will hold, I think. And then if you spin it even further, maybe blockchain technology will, will get in there too. Nowadays, everybody thinks blockchain is solely um, connected to, to Bitcoin, but it's a whole technology um, behind it that, that think that I think we will benefit um, too and um, yeah as Craig already said something that we have immediately now is, is cloud-based technology 
that's going to be the next big thing for, for in, in the whole area of inventory management. Very exciting. Thank you. Okay, Cedric, come on, what's next? Yeah, so for, for us, we, so we're a brick, brick provider of technologies, right? And uh, we started with barcodes, Paul, because barcode yeah. is uh, spread all over the goods and pallets. So it's uh, very, very important to do that. But uh, on our roadmap, we have a lot of other technologies of data extraction. Uh, Jonathan, you spoke about AI. Obviously, we want to apply AI. We also have some, um, uh, some plans for uh, augmented reality. And uh, with our customers, we really would like to, to move on to, Mike just spoke about OCR. Uh, we also some plans uh, for shape recognition. So all of this obviously will depend on the needs of our customers, but we, we want to become the data extraction uh, experts uh, for our customers in uh, logistics and in warehouse. So we'll go basically where our customers uh, want us to go. And, uh, yeah. and a lot of things on our plates and on our roadmap to, to develop. Well, it's very exciting stuff that you're doing and we, and we wish you well with it. Uh, Mike. So for me, as everyone says now, the AI and machine learning topic is one of the most important thing, I guess, which will come up in the next five to 10 years to determine more than, so from our side, what kind of damages we see on pallets, damages in the warehouse, damages in the whole infrastructure of the warehouse. But for us also as the only hardware company here in this um, talk, I think also the battery technology is one of the most important part for us. Because what we currently see is we put a very heavy battery into our system to provide us a flight time of roughly five to seven hours. And we hope that we can minimize this, the, the size of our system uh, and then to maximize the flight, uh, the, the flight time with uh, now coming new battery technology to get everything lighter and longer lasting. Yeah. So for, for us, those two things are the most, most important parts for the next five to 10 years. Well, meanwhile, we wish you well with what you have at the moment and Thank the you. development alongside that. Uh, and Craig, what's, what's coming next from Manhattan? Well, so it'll have to be the view of Craig Summers because we never, you, you might have no, heard this before, Paul. We, ne we, never, we never talk about futures, you know, and, no. and, and, and never release what we're going to do. But, but the fact that we've already embedded and using today a lot of AI and machine learning in our current active systems, then I think... That, 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 that's a real watch this space. And I think from my point of view, as hmm, it, it really is, think about it the way we're driving our cars, that the harmonization of person and machine is just gonna get, is gonna get more and more efficient, isn't it? You know, so that's how I think operations are gonna streamline. And if we think about, if we think about us as consumers and the customer experience we want, we want the benefits of both, don't we? We want the benefits of people available to us when we need them and the benefits of really slick, integrated, fast processes to get what we want when we want it. Brilliantly put. I think you summed that up for everybody there, Craig. Thank you so much. And thanks to all four of our, of our panel. Just a message for our audience. By all means, please use the chat facility. If you have further questions, please use that. Or you can write to us at Logistics Business or call us and we can... Uh, pass on messages, contacts to the panel, should you so wish. Uh, but other than that, thank you for joining us. And thanks so much to our, to our panel, Craig, Mike, Cedric, and Jonathan, and looking forward to seeing you in the flesh soon. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Paul.